that's better. <laughs> Wonder why the screen was uh, not so good. My camera lens was dirty. So, good morning. Welcome to Friday morning prayers. Good to be with you once more. Hope you are all well. And uh, raring to go on this Friday morning. Let's just take a few moments to come into God's presence, shall we? Let's still our hearts and minds and open ourselves up to what Jesus might say to us through his word. Thank you, Lord, that your word says that your spirit is in us. So we just ask for your spirit to enliven us this morning and to fill us afresh. So we begin with uh, Augustus' prayer. Grant me, even me, my dearest Lord, to know you and love you and rejoice in you. Let the love of you grow every day more and more in me, that my joy may be full in you. Oh, I long for that, don't, I? don't you, to love the Lord more and more every day. Wow. Then we move on to Northumbrian prayer. One thing I've asked the Lord, this is what I seek that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. So when I ask the question, if you could respond after me, so who is it you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Lord, have mercy. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have believed and come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. So our psalm this morning is Psalm 63. And we're going to be continuing in Galatians, chapter 3, 15 to 25. So Psalm 63. O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my body longs for you in a dry and weary land <coughs> where there is no water. Excuse me. <coughs> I've seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. 
On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. They who seek my life will be destroyed. They will go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God's name will praise him, while the mouths of liars will be silenced. Wow. Those first few verses just talk about how to love God, don't they? And to really focus your life on God. And I think deep down we all want to do that, but some, somehow life gets in the way and we fail. Other things take over our lives, don't they? So let's just take a moment of saying sorry to God. So we not only fail God, but we fail our friends and neighbours by saying things we shouldn't have said or thinking things we shouldn't have thought. But, um, yeah, so let's just take a time to reflect on where we've gone wrong in the past week, where we've let God down. And just, just focus on that for a few moments. And may the power of your love, O Lord, fire in sweet as honey, wean our hearts from all that is under heaven, that we may, may die for the love of your love. You who were so good as to die for love of our love, that we may live joyfully a life of simplicity and humble service. Let us confess our sins and rejoice in our utter dependence on God. Let us join together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. And may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Holy Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So, a reading from Galatians, chapter 3, verses 15 to 25. Brothers, let me take an example from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside out or add to a human covenant, that has been duly established. So it is in this case. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. The scripture does not say and to seeds, meaning many people, but and to your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. What I mean is this. The law introduced 430 years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the promise. For if the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on a promise. But God in his grace 
gave it to Abraham through a promise. What then was the purpose of the law? It was added because of transgressions until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. The law was put into effect through angels by a mediator. A mediator, however, does not represent just one party, but God is one. Is the law therefore opposed to the promise, promises of God? Absolutely not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. But the scripture declares that the whole world is a prisoner of sin, so that what was promised being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. So the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. Hmm. Interesting passage. It gets a bit complicated, doesn't it? Let's try to expand on that. So Paul now goes on to explain why the Abrahamic covenant stands above the law. The covenant came first and it was a promise from God to Abraham and his seed. This is talking about one person. And Paul is clear that this person is Christ. I think we can all agree with that. Now this covenant was made before the law came, 430 years later. So Abraham was credited as righteous, not by keeping the law, but by trusting God and being obedient to him. In other words, living by faith. The law, when it came, didn't set aside God's promise. It was to show that people couldn't make themselves righteous by obeying the law and so were in need of a saviour to take away the sin and make them righteous before God which Jesus did by fulfilling the law for us. They also said that Abraham would be the father of many nations. This has come about through Jesus the seed because in fulfilling the law we now only have to believe and trust in him just as Abraham believed and trusted in God to be made righteous so what was the purpose of the law it was put in place to set apart God's chosen people to try and stop them being wayward in their sin like other nations that worshipped idols, put restrictions on them that must have felt like a slavery to them. In fact, they couldn't keep this law. If they had been able to, then keeping the law would have made them righteous, making it unnecessary for a saviour. However, Paul says, the whole world is a prisoner to sin. So that the promise made to Abraham that he will be the father of many nations through the promised seed is fulfilled. But Jesus fulfills the promise and the law, doesn't he? By um, making Abraham the father of many nations. Because everyone who believes and trusts in Jesus, the seed, became sons of Abraham, so that by faith, not by the law, many are made righteous. The law was put in place to lead us to Christ, 
that we might be justified by faith, and no longer held captive by the law and all its rules. The law is there to make us aware of our weakness, isn't it? To make us realise that it doesn't matter how hard we try, we're still sinners. You know, even if it's just in fault, we can't help ourselves. And the sin brings all that out. I mean, the law brings that out, doesn't it? We just can't make ourselves righteousness. Jesus does that for us. And that's amazing grace. It doesn't cost us anything. It cost him everything. He gave up his place in heaven to come down to earth to be one of us. Amazing. What a great God we have, eh? We'd be lost without him. So Jesus, we just give you all the glory. We give you praise and honour. Oh dear, we just want to worship you, Lord. We want to love you with all our hearts. Help us this day to try, well, to want more of your love. To want more of you in us. So that as we go out, we can reflect that love to others. And others may see something of you in us that will glorify you. Lord, we long to see your kingdom come. We want to see people turning to you, Lord. It's just seems so long, Lord, since your spirit moved in a mighty way in this nation. We long to see it happen once more. We long to see the days um, when you moved in a mighty way in Wales and the pubs were empty and prisons were empty and your spirit just transformed lives. Oh Jesus, come we pray. Enliven your church once more. Give us confidence that you will bring life to many through your Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's move into a time of prayer. Holy and strong one, we praise you for Jesus Christ, our great high priest, who has entered into the fullness of the kingdom in heaven and opened for us the gate of glory. May we approach the throne of grace with boldness in the name, in the time of need, and know your mercy and grace through Christ our King, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God forever. Amen. Lord, we pray that we may seek you and so enter into life. We pray for all who seek you in, sim in simplicity and humility. For all who find you in their service of others. Bless all who are in religious communities and all seeking to consecrate their lives to you. We pray for any who have lost their faith on their way. So when I say, Lord, give us grace, if you could respond with and help us in our needs. So, Lord, give us grace and help us in our needs. For we pray for all who are choked by their riches, for people possessed by possessions, 
for all who are afraid to give and afraid to share, for all who have amassed wealth but are poor in spirit, for all who are suffering through the greed and the avarice of others. Lord, give us grace and help us in our needs, in all our needs. God, we thank you for all who have sacrificed for us, for all who have enriched our lives by their goodness, for all who have been gracious and generous to us. Teach us to be generous and willing to give. We pray for our friends and families. Lord, give us grace and help in all our needs. We pray for all who are overworked and are work weary, for all who lack freedom and suffer through injustice, for all who are denied basic human needs. We pray for all who are ill or are in need of help. Lord, give us grace and help in all our needs. We give thanks for all who have entered into glory, for all who have triumphed over darkness and evil. We pray for loved ones departed. Lord, give us grace and help us in our needs. We join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me once more this Friday morning. It's always good to be with you. So enjoy the rest of your day and have a good weekend. But before you go, we'll have a blessing, shall we? God, our Heavenly Father, whose Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, took the form of a servant, grant that you may serve him through serving others. Our blessing from Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. What more could you ask for? Well, have a great weekend. Look forward to seeing you maybe Sunday or cafe Friday morning. Uh, Saturday morning, sorry. So, yeah. Enjoy the rest of the day. Love you. Bye.